say one. Good afternoon. My name is Martin Long. I'm the MLA for West Yellowhead and the Parliamentary Secretary for Small Business and Tourism. I'm joined here today by Minister Schweitzer, Minister Horner, and Clinton Sanko, Sanko sorry, uh, from Business Link to highlight the Digital Economy Program. We know the pandemic accelerated the need for the economy's digital transition. This is more important than ever for small businesses to have a digital footprint to reach their customers. The Digital Economy Program ensures businesses across the province have the support they need to offset the costs of going digital. As the past year and a half has demonstrated, it is more important than ever to support local. So this program gives customers more opportunities to support their local businesses in an online format. Our government is committed to supporting small businesses and is excited about this program that will help more business in Alberta extend their reach and connect with new customers. With that, I would like to invite Minister Schweitzer to the podium to provide more details on the Digital Economy Program. Thank you so much, uh, everybody, for being here today. It's an exciting day for small businesses uh, across Alberta and the partnership that we're looking to form with them across our amazing province. So our digital economy program is a $10 million funding over two years from the province of Alberta, plus $3 million has been contributed by Prairie Development from the federal level. And we're partnering with Digital Main Street as well as Business Link to get this done. And it, it's really kind of a multi-pronged approach to provide our small businesses across Alberta with the opportunity to compete in a digital landscape. And we're seeing with this pandemic, the acceleration of e-commerce across the world. And you have major international players that are continuing to provide further services, different advancements. And we wanna make sure small businesses across Alberta have a chance to compete and make sure that they can keep up with it. So if they were thinking about, you know, what does it mean to have an e-commerce strategy? What does it mean to be online in the current context? It can be intimidating for many businesses. And we wanna make sure we break down those barriers as best as we can. So we have a two-pronged approach. One is, is with our shop here, powered by Google. And this one here is quite exciting. We have partnerships with Google, you got Shopify, MasterCard, you have Facebook, you've got QuickBooks, Yellow Pages, all here as a partnership to help small business accelerate their ability to reach people online for, for different programs. And again, this is for small businesses with 50 or fewer, pro, for 50 or fewer employees in the province of Alberta. On top of that, we're creating the Digital Service Squad. And this one here is really amazing. So with Business Link's help, we're gonna be reaching out to chambers, business organization, indigenous communities, and just community groups across Alberta that wanna help small businesses with their digitization efforts. And with this money, we're gonna be providing grants to these organizations to hire post-secondary students, as well as people that recently graduated from school, with the opportunity to provide free of cost uh, consulting services to these small businesses so that they understand the landscape, when it, whether it's developing out a social media strategy or whether or not it's helping them figure out e-commerce, how to better connect with their customers, and also to take a look at further markets beyond just Alberta as well, to give them that ability to be online and grow their businesses. So with that, I just want to turn it over to my colleague, the Associate Minister, Nate Horner, uh, with some further details, because this is, again, it's a strategy for all of Alberta, and particularly when you take a look at our approach on rural broadband, that's really key for us to make sure we break down barriers and provide an opportunity for all Albertans. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Nate Horner. Good afternoon. My name is Nate Horner, and I'm proud to serve as Alberta's Associate Minister of Rural Economic Development. It's an honour to be here today joining Minister Schweitzer and Business Link for this very important announcement. For those of you who may not know me, uh, the Premier appointed me to Cabinet in July to promote economic development and prosperity in Alberta's remote and rural communities. Since then, I've been working with my Cabinet colleagues on important initiatives like expanding rural broadband internet. 
Minister Glubish and his team at Service Alberta have done great work on this file, committing $150 million to improve rural connectivity. Reliable high-speed internet is critical to addressing some of our challenges facing rural businesses. Getting online without interruption is an important step to a better digital experience for businesses and their customers. As the world continues to go digital, we need to be ready. Just yesterday, we launched our online engagement tour with rural Albertans to better understand the opportunities and challenges facing rural economic development across the province. We've been hearing for years that poor connectivity is hindering rural businesses, which is why this announcement of the Digital Economy Program is so important. More rural businesses will now be able to create a digital presence or improve an existing one. Rural businesses have told me that this is exactly the type of support that they need to grow their businesses. Ensuring that rural, remote and Indigenous communities are part of the digital economy means we can build, create and diversify jobs and business opportunities to every corner of Alberta. Rural Albertans have often had to choose between living in their hometown and pursuing new opportunities. But as the world moves digital and small businesses have the ability to expand online, Albertans will be able to live and work anywhere. Programs like Digital Main Street mean those high quality local small town products can be sold around the world. And that's great news for all Albertans. So thank you. I'll make way for, uh, for Clinton here. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. My name is Clinton Sanko, and as Vice Chair Business Link, it is my pleasure to share the news of a new program we're offering called the Digital Economy Program. This will bring additional support to thousands of small businesses throughout Alberta. The Digital Economy Program is an incredible opportunity for small businesses across Alberta to level up their digital presence, increasing their potential to generate more revenue online. This is extremely important for all businesses since we all conduct business through our phones and online every day. Business Link is thrilled to partner with Digital Main Street to deliver this program in Alberta. Digital Main Street brings their network of corporate partners who are supporting small business digital adoption while Business Link is working to support the administration and province-wide activation of the program. This partnership along with the involvement of business support organizations throughout the province and this funding from the government of Alberta will create an immediate impact for thousands of businesses and entrepreneurs throughout our great province of Alberta. Thank you. All right, that concludes the speaking portion of today's event. We're gonna move to the media Q&A. Uh, we have reporters both on the phone and uh, in person today, so please, uh, if you're here in person, identify yourself by your name and your outlet, and we'll go with one question and one follow-up today. So we'll start on the floor. Please go ahead. Hi, my question's for you, Minister Schweitzer. I'm Audra Never from French CBC. Um, sorry to the stakeholders, I have an... Oh. <laughs> okay, sorry to the stakeholders, I have a... I didn't know I would be first, but I have an off-topic question. Um, Minister Schweitzer, we'd like to know what details that were included in the statement of claims of Ariella Kimmel that you knew about specifically. Um, we want to know specifically what you knew about what Ariella Kimmel said, alleged was happened to her, the allegations around Minister Devin Dreeshen, and the alleged conduct of Evan Bernardo. So I want to make sure I answer this as accurately as possible. A lot of the information that I read about yesterday in the CBC article, I haven't had a chance yet to read the statement of claim, so I, I can't speak specifically to the statement of claim. What I read in the, in the CBC article, a lot of that information was new to me. Uh, quite a bit of it was new to me, uh, particularly in relation to my colleague. Uh, all of that information was, was new to me uh, yesterday. Uh, when it came to you know, situation involving Ivan Bernardo, I had heard rumblings and like third and fourth hand uh, by the time I had heard about it in the, in the legislature, uh, it was already being looked into through the HR process uh, at, at, through the Premier's office. So uh, again, the, a lot of that information was new to me yesterday. And what about Minister Dreeshen's conduct? Uh, that information was completely new to me yesterday. 
Just to follow up also for Minister Schweitzer with apologies to the Business Link folks. Um, you, do you agree with the Premier's assertion that these sexual harassment allegations and the conduct allegations against Minister Dreeshen, were they properly addressed? And if so, why or why not? Uh, on that side there, I mean, I, I can't speak to the Premier's HR team specifics as to what they're looking at, what they've conducted so far. I'm not privy to that information. Uh, but I will say this, is that, you know, as a husband uh, of a professional wife, um, as in daughters, you know, sexual harassment is, a, is an issue that we have to take completely seriously uh, in any workplace. We have to make sure we hold ourselves to a high standard uh, in government, particularly when you're in a position of leadership. Uh, and I want to make sure that you know, we send that signal to staff, people that work in the legislature, people that work for the government of Alberta, that sexual harassment is not acceptable, period. And we want to make sure, and I know that we're using this as an opportunity to review our processes. Uh, I hopefully that is a robust, pro, you know, robust exercise for us to make sure that you know, we catch any issues if there are, uh, and make sure that there are consequences if they found, are found to be, if there's found to be sexual harassment through that, uh, through that review. Hopefully there are consequences that come with it. So speaking of consequences, given the allegations against Minister Dreeshen, what do you think should happen with him? Should he stay in cabinet? Should he stay in caucus? Why or why not? You know what, on that side there, I, don't have, I haven't had a chance yet to talk to Minister Dreeshen, uh, and I know that the Premier and his team are looking into the situation. They're looking into the uh, allegations of sexual harassment. Uh, I want to make sure that, uh, as an elected official, I have an interest in that to make sure it's done properly, uh, but I'll defer to the Premier and his HR team to make sure that it's done right. Thank you. With that, we'll move to the phones. Operator, can you please put through our first caller? Dean Bennett, Canadian Press. Hi, thanks. Another follow-up for the minister, please. Minister, something's very strange here. Uh, you're very uh, tight with uh, with uh, Ariel. I mean, you'll, you're you're on her user as a reference. She uses you as a reference on her job. Presumably, she works with you every day. And yet, in this situation, we've got a very serious allegation of sexual harassment involving. It's one of your staff. She's the direct report, but this is your staffer. And your chief of staff reaches out to everybody, other cabinet ministers, staffers, but never to her direct report and her confidant, Doug Schweitzer. How can that be? You know what? Uh, it's one of those situations where I, I'm, I learned a lot yesterday in that report. Uh, when, I, when she came on as my chief of staff, I'd never worked with her before. Uh, we built a relationship over time where I came to trust her. Uh, I still trust her to this day. She was an excellent staffer. I was a reference for her. I'd work with her again any second, any day. Uh, I believe in her. She's dedicated. She works incredibly hard. A lot of the information, though, that came out yesterday was, was new to me. Dean, do you have a follow-up? With respect, I have to ask, what does that say about the culture of your office when there is a serious allegation involving one of your staff and no one thinks to bring you into it? Um, I mean, these are people that are working for you every day. I mean, when did you exactly find out about this allegation, and what did you do about it? And if you didn't do anything about it, what does that say about the culture of the office and your leadership? I mean, you have to fight for these people. You have to fight for your staff, don't you? Dean, I appreciate that question. You have to make sure you take a look at yesterday and the commentary that was provided. None of it was around my office. Not one thing was alleged about me, my conduct, my office, the environment of my office. I take great pride and making sure that I put in place a work environment that everybody feels as though that they're empowered within the office that we have. I've had campaign managers, I've had lots of people. We want to make sure that you take every single step. I've seen that in my professional life as when I was a lawyer. I've seen that in my political life. Uh, again, like I said, a lot of that information was new to me yesterday. And you know what? Uh, I want to make sure that this investigation that they're ongoing through the HR department to make sure that we have no sexual harassment happening in the workplace is done thoroughly. Thank you, Dean. Operator, can you please put through our final caller? Carolyn Dunn, CBC. Uh, this is also from Minister Schweitzer. Uh, Minister Schweitzer, um, Minister Dreeshen is alleged to have been aggressive while intoxicated, and there have been allegations that there's a culture of excessive drinking among ministers and staff. Uh, what do you know about that, and uh, what needs to be done about that? Yeah, I can't speak to any specifics on that. I wasn't present for uh, 
any engagements with Minister Dreeshen. I don't believe I've been to any social functions after post work with Minister Dreeshen that I'm, I can recall, uh, at least with any detail. Uh, one thing, I, I'm, I'm up here in Edmonton to work. Uh, I go to the office, quite often you'll find me in the gym, and I go back to my hotel, I sleep, I get it back up in the morning and I go back to work. Uh, I don't come up to Edmonton to socialize, I come to Edmonton to work for the people that elected me to get me here uh, and to do good work for Albertans. Uh, I'd refer you to other people that may be more involved in those type of situations. Carolyn, do you have a follow-up? So, I do have a follow-up. So, basically, um, given your uh, colleague, Leela Ahir, says that the Premier's office has mishandled this file and that the Premier should resign over it, there seems to be a void uh, in policy. I'm wondering if you can comment on how this file has been handled so far and what needs to happen policy-wise in the future. I think on that front there, I know that the Premier's office is going to do a review of their sexual harassment policy. I know with, particularly with the, the scrutiny that we have right now, I want to make sure personally that it is robust and that it provides a safe work environment for everybody in the office to make sure that we can continue to attract talented people to work for us in the legislature. It also sends a signal to the government of Alberta as well that we want to engage with on a regular basis that we take these situations very seriously. So we want to hold ourselves to the highest possible standard. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.